give you your activities of your limbs. Didn't he give you your mouth to say thank you, Lord? Didn't he give you your hands to clap? Thank you, Lord. Didn't he give you your feet to stomp? I say thank you, Lord. What a mighty God we serve. Oh, church. I feel good. I feel good down in my soul Every time I think about Jesus I feel good Oh, I feel good, good, good I feel good down in my soul Every time I think about Jesus I feel good Oh, I feel good What a mighty God we serve. Come on, yes, sir. Church, if you just think about the goodness of it, think about the things that he's done for us. Yes, sir. You can't help but feel good. Yes, sir. I'm going to read scripture. Psalms 121. Amen. I will lift up mine eyes unto the hill. From with cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord, which made heaven and earth. He will not suffer thy foot to be moved. He that keepeth thee will not slumber. Yes. Behold, he that keepeth Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is thy keeper. Yes, is. The Lord is thy shed upon thy right hand. Yes. The sun shall not smack thee by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord shall preserve thee from all evil. He shall preserve thy soul. The Lord shall preserve thy going out and thy coming in. From this time forth and even forevermore. I have read Psalms 121 in its entirety. May the Lord add a blessing to the reader, the hearers, and the doers yes, of his holy word. Church, I don't know about you, but um, I just feel good deep down. deep down. It's a, it's a good that I, I, I really can't explain. It's a good that, and a joy that I wish everybody could feel. If they don't feel this one, feel a little higher one. Because I'm just so grateful. I could just think about all the years that went through. I know some of, the, some of you don't even know, but this is a new church building back in 1989. But our church anniversary started in 1983. But the biggest thing about it, when I was a child coming to Mount Pisgah, the church didn't even have no water. We didn't have no running water. They had a pump outside that you had to go to if you want to wash your hands, that you had to go to if you want a little drink of water. No water fountain, no bathrooms. Can y'all imagine that church? Look how far God has brought us. Let's give our Lord and Savior a hand clap. Look how far God has brought us. Thank you. Praise you. It's just so, it's just so, I'm just so grateful. You know? I'll tell you something that I used to tell my wife. Back in the day, they only had church on full Sunday. 
And I really love coming into this church because they only had church on fourth Sunday. Amen. Now, I grew up in Savannah where I had to go to church every Sunday. <laughs> but I said, if they can go to heaven on just one Sunday, that's the church I want to go to. Because I want it. <laughs> I want to be playing football. I want to be playing basketball. I want to play baseball. But my mom and dad said, you better put on your suit and baseball at it. <laughs> so I said, if I ever get old enough to come to Clio, that's going to be my church. But I didn't know I was going to be too old to play football. <laughs> I didn't think about I was going to be too old to play basketball. Now I see what they was trying to instill in me. You need to praise God yes. as often and as regular as you can. That's why I feel good. 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 Deep down in my soul. At this time we have prayer by Brother Minister Antonio. As he lead us in prayer, Antonio Herbert. Oh, we thank you, Lord Jesus. Father, we thank you, Lord, for this great and righteous and holy day that thine Savior has made. Yes. Father, we give you glory, God, for being able to come inside this tabernacle on today, God. In the name of Jesus, God, we bless you, God, oh Lord, for you, God, allowing us, God, God, to live throughout all week, God, just to get the Sunday to praise you, God. Praise God, some of us praise you all week, God. For praise. that reason, God, we praise you for this morning, God. In the name of Jesus, name Lord, of you Jesus. said rejoice in the Lord. Oh, ye righteous, yes, for Lord. praise is calmly for the upright, God. So, Father, we rejoice in this service on today, God. Thank you, Father, Jesus. we rejoice, God, oh, Lord, to lift up unto the heavens this morning, God, to give you praise, God. God, some of us might be going through some things, God, but, Lord, we shall rejoice, God, in the name of Jesus. God, because we know that Christ Jesus gives us the victory God and Father we tell you we thank you God for the victory that is inside thine children God Father we walk in victory today God God we stand in victory today God God we dwell in victory today God in the name of Jesus Lord touch us God God give some of us another touch God God that we will be able to feel thine own anointing God that we'll be able to feel thine glory God that we'll be able to feel God thine very presence God with is Jehovah Shammah. Lord, we ask you, Lord, that you will show up in this service, God. God, show up in the lives of those that don't believe, God. God, that they shall believe. In the name of Jesus. Lord, we ask you, God, we ask you, Lord, that you will open up the glory cloud upon this tabernacle today, God. In the name of Jesus. Lord, that your glory, God, that shall and will dwell in this place, God. Father, we bind every spirit, God, that tries to hinder this service. We bind every spirit, you, God, that you have our shame, glory, that tries to confuse the service. You, Father, it shall not reign. It shall not rule in this service. In the name of Jesus, you said for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God. Through the pulling down of strongholds, nothing shall prevail in this ministry today, God. Oh, Lord, when it comes to hindering thy children, God, we shall give you glory. Lord, we will give you praise. In the name of Jesus, and you said unto him, a Peter, upon this rock, I will build my church. In the name of Jesus, that the head that, that the gates of hell yeah. shall not prevail. Yeah. Nothing shall hinder this service. Nothing shall hinder thy children on today. But Lord, we tell you, we thank you right now for the releasing of thy spirit for the releasing of thine own anointed father we give you praise father we give you honor in the name of jesus lord touch the leader of this house touch his wife touch his family father uplift him in jesus name father that your anointed god will spread upon him like wings god as he preach your word today god as he steer the service father share my shame father Father, Father, Christ Jesus, Father, our Lord, Father, our Redeemer, lay your anointing upon him. 
Lay your spirit of Shabbat Lay it on him now. Yes. In the name of Jesus. God, we bless you. God, we bless you. God, we bless you. Shema. God, we bless you. Touch God. Touch the praise and worship God. Touch the musicians, God. God, that you were anointing God. That it would move inside the service. When Paul, when King Paul was troubled, David played. David played. Lord, we ask you, Lord, that Nicole will play. Lord, we ask you, Lord, that Brother Josh will play. That it would move every spirit. That he hid the dying children. And Father, we give you glory. Father, we give you glory. Glory, glory. Lord, we send in all of you. Lord, Lord we send in all of you. Lord. Touch us in Jesus' name. Thank you. Give him glory. Thank you. Just 
made everything right. I gave him my own filthy garment. He gave me a robe of real wife. And now he's king a man I'm from heaven. That is why I'm happy tonight. One more time. The windows of heaven are open. Fire. The fire is falling tonight. What you got? I got joy, joy, joy in my soul Since Jesus made everything right I gave him, I gave him my own filthy garment Oh, he gave you He gave me a robe of your wife And I'm feasting a man up from him And I'm feasting And I'm feasting a man up from him And you're feasting I'm feasting a man up from him Say that is why Thank you. 
Worship and praise that a king deserves. Come on, he deserves it all. If it has not been for the Lord, yeah, it's okay. You don't have to stand because he stood for you. It's okay. Sit right there. Because, see, every time we think of his goodness, it requires an action. Did you hear me, Ann Howard? I say every time we think of his goodness, it requires you to respond. I just want to know this morning, what type of response? What type of response will you give a God that gave you everything you didn't deserve? That gave you everything you asked for? And what you don't have, you don't need it. Come on, Zion. Come on, Mount Pisgah. The resilient church. Let's worship him. Come on, let's worship him. Oh, ho, ho. 
towards you. Watch this. You. Watch this. Say, take me. Take me. I'm yours. I'm yours. Take me. Take me. I'm yours. I'm yours. I just, just want, want you. I just want you. I just want you. Come on, let me hear you say, say, take me. Take me. I'm yours. I'm yours. Take me. Take me. I'm yours. I'm yours. I just want you. I just want you. I just want you. Everybody say, take me. Take me. I'm yours. I'm yours. Use me. Take me. Use me. I'm yours. I just want you. I just need you. Just need Everybody you. say, take me. Take me. I'm yours. I'm yours. Take me. Take me. I'm, yours. I'm yours. I just need you. I just need you. I just need you. If that's your testimony today, and you believe that everything that you're going through, everything that you come out of, little Tony, everything that you're headed to, on today, you're going to make a declaration that God, if you help me, God, if you give me vision in this season, God, if you continue to let me know everything is going to be all right. How many know he's the type of God? He will come and reassure you that everything is going to be all right. Because his desire, Jasmine Howard, his desire is for you to desire him. That's all he wants, Joshua. My question is, how bad do you want him? Oh, I just need you. 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 Watch this. Great God. Say you and only you, Jesus. You and only you, Jesus. Say you and only you, Jesus. You and only you. Just in case the devil thought I was talking about something else or someone else. Ricky, I want to let him know I'm talking about Yahshua. This, whoo, I was about to call him Emmanuel. You and only you, Jesus. You and only you, Jesus. Oh, you and only you, Jesus. 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 So take. I don't want it. I don't need it. Take everything, Lord. Take everything. Stay right there. I don't want it. I don't want. I don't want it. I don't want it. Say I don't want it. I don't want it. Whatever the devil, whatever the enemy has been introducing you to. A old habit, a old flame, a old weight. You got the power, Minister Tony, to open your mouth and say, "I." The Bible says, "Amber, death and life is in the power of the tongue." You say it. Come on, say, "I don't." I don't want it. Say, "I." devil don't want you to say it. He wants you to be stuck in the same position you in. Still struggling with sin. Still struggling with disconnection. Still struggling with being isolated. I don't know who I'm talking to but the devil is trying to isolate you from your miracle. He's trying to isolate you from your breakthrough. He wants to keep He's trying to isolate you from your healing. But when I was in the back office, God reassured me that healing is in the room. Miracles is in the room. Forgiveness is in the room. Breakthrough. Say, I don't want it. Say, I don't need it. I don't need it. 
everything that the enemy offered to you. It ain't. Mom and daddy told me, don't you accept candy from a stranger. I come to let you know if God didn't send it, if God ain't in it, then get away from it. I just want you. I just want you. I just want you. Just want you. I just want you. Woo! Just want you. When he come in, I just want you. Jesus brings an automatic change. Just want you, brother Tony. Now that you invited him in, he wants to. Just want you. He comes to change. Just want you. He comes to make all things new. Just want you. It's time for a new way of talking. I'm talking to somebody. I'm, it's time for a new way of walking. It's time for a new way of dressing. It's time for some new company. I hear God. I'm speaking prophetically. God says some of the people you've been hanging around family to, you need to get rid of the old. God say get rid of the old habits the old conversation the old company and walk into the newness of life we just want you we just want you we just want you just want you nobody else but you just want you nobody else but you There's a spirit of worship in this house. And I beseech you to tap into the spirit. Now, nah, this ain't a stage. This ain't even a pulpit today. This is a pool of Bethesda. Ah, Sister Warner, do you know what the pool of Bethesda is? Ah, read your Bible. The pool of Bethesda is a place where impotent, lame, sick, halted, discouraged people came and every time the angel came and troubled the water whoever was in the water y'all don't believe it whatever your situation is if you just come to the pool the place where Jesus is the place where healing is I don't care if you came last Sunday, I don't care. The place where salvation is. The place where your breakthrough is. I ain't talking about money. I'm talking about that habit. Yes, she. The pool of Bethesda. The place of reckoning. This is it. I dare you to say this is it. This is it. This is it. This is, it. This is the last time the devil gonna see me like this. Oh, I know I'm hurting. I know it pains me. I know I fell short. But this is it. I'm coming out. You're coming out. Come on, you need to be praying and worshiping. Come on. What you do at the pool? What do you do when you come to the pool? Relax in Jesus. How do I relax in Jesus? Worship him. Open your mouth, lift up your hands, open your heart, and worship him. And let it come over you. Let the change, let the change, oh, oh, oh. let the change, let the change come over you. He's moving even now. Who shot up? Come on, I'm gonna need to touch you. The Holy Ghost is doing the altar call. That's it, Amber. He shot up by now. Hey, your bullshit. God is here. I say, God ain't near, He's here. There's a difference in being near. I say, God is here. Shot up. Receive it in Jesus' name. Receive it in Jesus' name. Receive it in Jesus' name. name. What you came for? God say it's yours. Let the Raise your hand. Let Say it's mine. Change, yeah. Come on. You got to give it to him. You got to give it to him. Say it's mine. It's mine. It's mine. Come 
Lord. Decree it, son Cassandra. Say it's mine. Everything the devil tried to steal from it, it's mine. Come on. It's mine. Woo. I ain't touching you. The Holy Ghost touching you. It's mine. Come on. Bye, bye, bye. Receive a move. Receive an impartation. Receive it now. Shut up. I say, hey, yeah, bye, bye. Receive it now. Receive it now. Receive it now. It's mine. It's my, 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 my. It's my, 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 my. Oh, it's my. Yeah, 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 yeah. Come on, come on, receive it. Get what you need. You had the altar. A place of healing. A place of breakthrough. Receive. Come on. That's right. Now. Ooh, oh. Woo. Come on. Say it's mine. I receive it. Tell Trent I'll never be the same. I never. The Holy Ghost is all over you. Say it's mine. The devil can't have it. Jesus gave it to me. Some of you should have came. Some of you should have came to the altar, but you didn't want. You say I ain't got to do all that. But God said if you're gonna receive it. You need to take a leap of faith. God says, take a step of faith. Come on. No longer would you be a slave to sin. You don't know where your last time is going to be. I said that last year. There's some people that are not here this year. They were here last year. So you better receive it now. It's my Holy Ghost. I can feel I can feel the power of God even moving over here. Woo. Don't quench the spirit. That means don't tense up. Get your mind off of your job, off of your house, off of your situation. And put your mind on Jesus. You came for a reason. You logged in for a reason. God is ready to give you the greatest gift that you can ever receive and that's it that's his presence he wants to be present in your situation but you got to invite him in oh it's mine that wonderful change that wonderful change oh it's mine oh it's mine Oh, it's mine. Oh, it's mine. This is what I hear the Holy Ghost saying. In this season, this is the last season of 2024. This year is breaking up in four months. Four, eight, twelve. Twelve months in a year. This is the last season. We're getting ready to leap over into another dispensation. God said there are some things that you can't take in 2025. And many of you, today was the day of release. Somebody say release. Come on, say release. Today is the day that you needed to release it. Because if you don't release it, it has an agenda. I'm talking about the stronghold. I'm talking about the very spirit that was kicked out of heaven over 2,000 years ago, Nikki. And it came to sow discord between you and God. And it's working nine and day, Sister Goldwire, to keep us complacent. To keep us in a routine. You need to know that God ain't a God of just regular routine. He switches and moves at his leisure. So God said you're at the last season 
of your life. And God said, because you made a commitment, I'm talking to you that made that commitment. God said, if you made that commitment today, begin to realize you're not the same. That's one of the tricks of the enemy. He tricked us to think that ain't nothing happened. Do you hear me? I just went to the altar. Pastor asked me to come. Oh, no, Tara. Whoosh. That thing that was a thorn in my side. That hindrance that was in the life of my family. I brought it to the altar. My financial hindrances. My grandchildren. My great grands. My husband. Your wife. Come on. Because you brought it to the altar. And you surrendered to God. God said today is the last time that you'll go through this again. I said this is the last time that you'll go through this this way again Takisha don't mean it won't come don't mean it won't come but the Bible says no weapon that's formed against you shall prosper I come to tell you amen Takita when it comes just plead the blood of Jesus I say plead the blood of Jesus over your family over your life over your future because it's a wonderful change, oh Lord, has come over me. Come on, let's sing it one last time. Say a wonderful your hands together you may return to your seats and give God a praise while you change say change change say I'm so glad I'm so glad he changed oh, I dare you to say change open your mouth and say change God said he's been getting ready to demonstrate himself again in your life. Listen to God. God say, I'm getting ready to show myself again. The last time God showed himself was on the mountain. And he told Moses to take off your shoes. Why did I need to take off his shoes? Because the ground that he was standing on was significant. It was unique. God said it was holy ground. And God allowed Moses, his prophet, to see him. But he couldn't handle seeing the awe of him. He just needed to see his hindwood part. And the Bible says God hid Moses in the cleft of the mountain. And the bush that was burning but never consumed Jeremiah. The Bible Cassandra say God passed by. God allowed Moses to see his hindwood part. And immediately, somebody scream, immediately. Immediately, God said, the Bible says his face began to shine so bright that when he went down to the people, he had to put a veil over his face because they couldn't stand to see the glory of God in their sin. The children of Israel, Israel were living in bondage and sin. And Mary, when they saw Moses, Jasmine, they began to see themselves. How many know? Hey, shut up. When the woman of God or the man of God stand up here and preach, it ain't about ticking your flesh. It ain't about to get a reaction from you. God 
wants you to see yourself. And when you see yourself, you ain't got time to be about everybody else. Because it's all about you. And what God is beckoning you to do in your life. Amen. I follow the Holy Spirit. I try to every now and then. I want to pray for um, Alex Alexia. Great God. Alyssa. Can I pray for you, Alyssa? Thank you, Lord. Whew. Sometimes when God tells me something, I hear it. And sometimes I think about y'all. <laughs> Not all the time. Amen. Not all the time, but every night then I be thinking about y'all. God said, get your mind off of them. God said, I'm calling you. You don't know what's getting ready to happen. You don't know what season that person may be in that they need to hear a word of confirmation. They may need to hear a word from God that can help them escape. Somebody whisper, escape. And just because you see people in church don't mean we're all delivered. Look at somebody say, we all on a journey. All right. We're all on a journey. So our job is to understand the word of God for your personal life. Sometimes we hear the word of God and we hear it for everybody else. But God said, this word is for you. God said, whoa. God said, down through the years, he's seen your struggles. God said he's seen the barriers that at times you run into. And some barriers in our lives, we don't tell Some barriers are personal. Because a lot of times we just don't want people to know. We just don't want to be in that area. I need every mother to stretch your hand up to this young lady. Every mother. God sees the intent of your heart. God knows your desires. God knows the plans that he has for you and God knows that the plans that you have for yourself line up with his will there's some things that have not transpired yet because it's not time but God wanted me to call you up here to let you know his promise is getting ready to be fulfilled in your life in every area spiritually whew. That place that you're want, wanting to reach in God, God said, I'm getting ready to take you there. <sighs> because he loves you. I don't know if you have dreams lately, but God said, I've been talking to you through your dreams. <sighs> I've been speaking to you. I've been letting you know that what you're getting ready to experience in your life in the next five months. God say, that's me showing you. Sometimes we have like deja vu moments where we see ourselves doing something, but when we get out of that, we're still in the place we were. God say, get ready for ministry. God say, get ready to be what these ladies are. I ask every what? God said, get ready to experience new life. God said, before new life can come in you, new life is going to come through you. It's going to come through you first. There are some things in your life that God said you, you need to excel in. You need to do more of. Okay? I want you to be real careful in the next five months who you talk to what you talk about you hear me because God said what's that March what's five months from now March uh, 
January 1st. What's that? February? Huh? Whew. God said, because when March come, I don't know what March means to you. But when March come, God say, you're going to be the same outwardly, but inwardly. You're getting ready to be the catalyst of the change in your whole family. Woo! I see family members over here. You, I see family members that you've been laboring for and praying for. I mean, I love your family. I mean, I know you got some family members that just don't get it. They just ain't got it yet. And you've been praying for them. You've been laboring for them. God said, I'm getting ready to do it for you, Alyssa. God said, the next five months, you're getting ready to be different from the inside out. Raise your hands. Come here, fiance. Stand by. We're getting ready to go. I got to go. But as I lay my consecrated hands on you, God said, this is getting ready to be a day of spiritual God say spiritual and financial. Don't know what you've been praying for. But God said, I'm getting ready to do it for your spirit, man. And then after I complete the assignment that I give you in you, which is an ongoing assignment, God said, I'm going to do it for your finances. You've been praying about some things that you won't but don't have yet. God say, stay faithful. Stay faithful over the few things. And God said, I'll allow you to be a Lord over many. I'm going to lay my hands on you. You may feel my hands, but God is getting ready to do, to do a work in you. He's getting, yeah, yeah. He's getting ready to crown you from the top of your head to the sole of your feet with the spirit of a mother. The spirit of Eve. The Bible say Eve means the mother of all living. God said, you won't just be a spiritual great mother, but physically you're going to be a good mother. In the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Ghost, I see elevation spiritually coming to your life. As you study the scriptures, God is, yeah, yeah, yeah. God is getting ready to open the portals and give you a deep understanding concerning the scriptures so that you can worship him more and continue to be a disciple. You are a disciple. You're called to go fishing. You are outreacher. Great God. In the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, receive it now in the Yabba. Yeah, 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 yeah. Receive it now in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Ghost. God say, I'm planting seeds in you even now. Water the seeds. Put them in the right atmosphere and watch them grow. All over this auditorium, you put your hands together, give God praise. Embrace your husband, give him some love. Change me, change me, Jesus. Say that with me. Say, change me, change me. Now say, Jesus. Ooh. Say it again. Change me, change me. Say, Jesus. I need you to say that online too. Change me. Change me. Do it, Jesus. Somebody say, do it, Jesus. Say, do it, Jesus. Say, do it, Jesus. Do it, Jesus. Say, do it, Jesus. 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 He's gonna do it for your family. Do it, Jesus. Do it, Jesus. 
Jesus. Say do it, Jesus. Do it, Jesus. You're speaking manifestation. It hasn't came yet, but God said, because you open your mouth and you're speaking it. Say, do it, Jesus. Say, do it, Jesus. Say, change me. Say, change me. Say, change me. Say, change me. I say, do it, Jesus. So the Ann Howard, stand up and say, change me. Change me. And say, do it, Jesus. <laughs> Woo! I see so much. If you only knew what God is getting ready to break in your life. I don't know how long ago, but there's a place called New Orleans. And it had a major flood. And they say something broke. What they call it? What broke? The levees. The levees broke. And what happens when the levees broke, it changed the whole state. The whole state of New Orleans. Every city. It was changed automatically overnight. Why? Because the levees broke. I come. You! I don't know what you've been waiting on. <sighs> Some of you don't believe it. Some of you need to go and test drive your new car. I don't know. Some of you need to go ahead and just lay your hands on the house. Some of you need to just go to lay hands on your loved ones and say, be healed. Some of you need to just do what God told you to do last year. Do what God told you to do last month. God said, I'm getting ready to let the levees break in your life. And you're getting ready to experience an overflow. And it's going to change your whole life. Say, change me. Say change, me. Change, me. Say, change me. Say change me. Say change me. Say do it, Jesus. Do it, Jesus. Oh, do it, Jesus. Do it, Jesus. Oh, do it, Jesus. Do it, Jesus. Say do it, Jesus. Do it, Jesus. The chains are breaking. Do it, Jesus. The chains are breaking. Do it, Jesus. I'm talking to somebody. The chains are breaking. The chains are breaking. Do it, Jesus. Oh, the water is flowing. Do it, Jesus. Oh, I see a woo. That's about. I see a baby being born now. What does that mean? Somebody about to experience. New life. Do it, oh, do it, Jesus. Do it, Jesus. Woo. Say, do it, Jesus. Do it, Jesus. Oh, do it, Jesus. Do it, Jesus. Oh, do it, Jesus. 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 Do it, to interrupt your agenda and program today you're here for a reason today and God said you can't leave the same way God said God said I'm going to give you your joy back I'm going to know some people wake up with no joy they mind on the bills they mind on the parents they mind on this they mind on what they don't have God said I'm getting ready to Stand up, Sabrina. God say, I'm getting ready to give you your joy back. Even though you're going through a tough time, God say, you can have joy in it. Somebody say, in it. God say, you can have joy in it. Stand up, Danasia. God say, you can have joy in it. Whoo. Raise your hands, Sabrina. Raise your hands, then Asia. Wow. Jesus. God said, I'm giving your joy back. I'm restoring you. Your joy is not coming through your works. It's not coming through what you can do. God say, this joy that I'm getting ready to give you money can't give it marriage can't give it a baby can't give it <sighs> new shoes new purse new house none of it can give it god said i'm getting ready to give you joy 
unspeakable joy. Joy overshadows grief. Joy conquers pain. Joy conquers misunderstanding. When you have joy, the devil got to flee. I dare somebody to shout joy. You won't do it. Shout joy. Say it again. Shout joy. I'm restoring your joy. Giving your joy back. Woo! Giving your joy back. I know you've been disappointed. I know you've been left. I know you feel lonely. But God say I'm giving your joy back. Your joy I feel like I'm getting it too. I feel like he's giving my joy back. If you want the joy too, why don't you stand and say, God say I'm opening the door. You can receive the joy too. Not just because you feel good. Not just because you get money. But God say I'm going to give you joy. Even in the rain. Mary Lewis, he's going to give you joy. Even in the storm. Even in the tornado. Even in the hurricane. I'm giving you joy. Receive your joy. Stop living in pain. No longer live in fear. Receive your joy. Give me my joy. He's giving your joy back. 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 The devil can't have it. He's giving your joy. The devil can't steal it. He's giving your joy back. This is called a prophetic service. He's giving your joy. He's giving your joy back. 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 You don't want it? What happens when God gives you something? The least you can do is tell him. Give him your joy back. He's giving your joy back. I know you're waiting on me to move on. But we might stay right here. Give your joy back. Yeah! He's giving your joy. He's giving your joy. He's giving your joy back. Giving your joy back. Woo! Giving your joy back. Woo! Giving your joy back. Woo! All right, we got to get out of that. God, God of mercy. Giving your joy back. Woo! Giving your joy back. Giving your joy back. Giving your joy back. You're free today. I know you feel like you're in bondage. But Cassandra, we free here. We're talking about free folks. I know the problem may still be in front of you. I know your situation may still be there when you get home. But God say, walk in your walk in your authority and get your joy back. Joy in my mind. Joy on my job. Joy in my spirit. The devil thought he had me. Your joy I said the devil back. thought he had me. Give me your joy back. Give me your joy back. Give me your joy back. Guess what, Nicole? Back. Guess what? The devil thought he had me. Jesus came and grabbed me. The devil thought he had me. But Jesus. Dude, some of y'all married, Maggie. Jesus had this. Jesus came and grabbed me. The devil thought he had me. You remember when you were. Jesus came and Remember when you needed him. Remember when you were lost. Remember when he wounded you. Remember when she did that. The devil thought he had me. He wanted you to fold like a folding chair. The devil he wanted you to give up and go back to that. He wanted you to go back to your ex. How many know we got some ex things that we can't go back to? I know what the devil thought he had me. Remember when you you the devil thought he had you. But Jesus came and grabbed me. The devil thought he had you. Jesus came and grabbed me. No music. Let me hear you say the devil. Let me hear you. The devil thought he had me. 
Come on, say it, or Come on, Herbert, say it. Jesus came and The devil thought he. I hear somebody say he thought wrong. I'm walking in my authority. Jesus came and. Jesus came and grabbed me. We got the victory. The devil thought he had me. Jesus came Jesus and came and grabbed me. Last time the devil, the devil thought he had Jesus, me. God kept me. Jesus came and grabbed me. God kept me close. So I wouldn't let go. <laughs> and it is so. And so it is. Yes, sir. Take that sickness. Take that sorrow. Take that grief. You fought, but God. I, Sister Renee, I dare you to say, you fought. You fought. Joshua, you fought. The devil fought. He fought. He tried. He, oh, oh, he came. Oh, it happened in my life. Oh, I say it happened to you, but he thought he had me. Thought I was going to go back to smoking. He thought you was going to go back to drinking, getting drunk, I'm sorry. Go back to womanizing. Go back to stealing. Look at somebody, he thought he had me. But, 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 say it, Lewis. But, but, but. Say it, Floyd. But, but Jesus. That's why you gotta say, but Jesus. Brandon Jacobs. Jesus, 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 Jesus. Come on, watch it. Here you go. Here you go, right here. Jesus, 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 Jesus. Jesus, 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 Jesus. Jesus, 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 Say Jesus, 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 Jesus. Say change me, change me, change me, change me, Jesus, 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 Jesus. They don't know to do Jesus. Jesus, say Jesus, 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 Jesus. Change my mind, change my walk, change my heart, change my talk, change my mama, change my daddy, change my fiance, change my job. Change my heart. Change my mind. Change my body. Do for me right now. 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 Jesus. 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 Put your hands together. Give God praise. to the club Friday or Saturday I waited for Sunday y'all to get that later Woo. change me 
Change me, change me, Jesus, Jesus. Why you wanna say it? Say Hale, 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 Hallelujah, 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 Yes, sir. The devil felt like Mike Tyson gave him an uppercut. I say your situation and your problem, it no longer, whoa, it no longer exists. I say it no longer exists. We speak here of manifestation. I see it, I feel it, but I'm free. I see it. I'm talking to you. I see the problem. I feel it, Ricky. But I'm free. Raise your hand if a tree fell on your house in the last month. That's why you should be giving. Ain't nobody raise their hand. Raise your hand if you lost your house in the last month. Raise your hand if flood into your whole house this month and you had to evacuate. Raise your hand if you had to spend two weeks in the hospital in the last month. Jesus, 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 Jesus. Jesus. Praise him. That's why we lift him up. Because he deserves it all. I say he deserves it all. The devil mad, but God is glad. Like that. I say the devil, he hot 38 man. But God is glad. Nobody raise their hand. Nobody raise their hand. So this is what we're gonna say. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Jesus. Jesus. worship you ought to get in the praise it's supposed to be uncomfortable it's supposed it's supposed to be a sacrifice everybody somebody put your hands together and give God a scream Birthday, Charlotte. It ain't your birthday, but act like it. You ought to act like it's your birthday. Somebody just gave you something you ain't deserve. You ought to praise them. Why you ain't clapping? Why you ain't jumping? It ain't my birthday, but it feel like Tony. It feel like he gave me something on my born day. So I want to give him praise. I want to give him honor. I want to tell them thank you. Oh, we got to go. What time? Great God. What y'all do? Y'all do? Oh, great God. Y'all been doing this this long? Put your hands and give God praise. And somebody say spirit break out every night then you never know when the fight is gonna break out over here somebody's gonna get spiritual not amnesia but you're gonna remember somebody over here doing the service you just gonna remember what God done for you what could have happened 
the assignment that God canceled. And you're just going to jump up and give God praise. And you might say something like, thank you. Thank you. In your Jesus. I don't know when it's going to happen, but it's going to happen. Hallelujah. To God be the glory. Amen. We love you today. We are Mount Pisgah, the resilient church. When God told us that we're changing life, we're changing lives, yeah. Through the power of God's love, for we are changing lives. Forever changing lives. This is who we are, Mount Pisgah. Okay, let's do love feast. Everybody go to somebody and say, I love you. I ain't seen you since first Sunday. I ain't seen you first Sunday. Where you been at? You know we had church this Sunday. Tell them you miss them. We had church and lights was off. Oh, say love. Love, 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 love. Brother Kevin, how we gonna say we love God and we can't love our brother and sister? Come on. Come on, everybody go to somebody. Come on, Amber. I ain't seen you get up yet, girl. You got feet. Come on, girl. Go get your blessing. Receive it. Through the power. All right, kids, I'm watching y'all. I'm watching y'all. For we are changing. This is called Love Feast at Mount Pisgah. Through the power. Hey, yes, we are. Through the power. What the world needs now is love, 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 love. It ain't love if you ain't giving it away. I say it ain't love if you ain't giving it away. Love, if they ever was a, if they ever wanna know where love lives, love is here. If you ever wanna know where peace lives, whoa. If you ever wanna know where love lives. If you ever wanna know where peace lives, for we for for we are Yes we are through the power Alright, that's it, y'all, that's it. Come on, come on, y'all. That's good. It don't take all that. Bet, 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 it don't take all that. Come on, sit down somewhere. Amber, why are you walking around? Sit down somewhere. Come on. What you walking around? Right, come on, y'all have y'all seat. Come on, Eric. What Eric doing? There's that. Ricky, what you doing, Rick? Go. Oh, if you ever want to know where love lives, say love lives. If you ever want to know, that's good. Amen. To God be the glory. To God be the glory. At this time, we want to, amen, welcome you. We want to um, give you some announcements. We want to show you that we appreciate you coming out to fellowship with Mount Pisgah IMC, the Resilient Church. At this time, we want you to, amen, listen to our announcements, our welcome and word to the wise. Coming from Sister Takesha Young. Put your hands together, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. I would like to welcome you to our Holy Communion service. Yes, I do understand it's second um, Sunday, but on fourth Sunday, we will celebrate this amazing church. Amen? Amen. 
Are there any visitors? Sit down, auntie. <laughs> On behalf of Pastor Farrell and Lee Lady Farrell, we are wel you are welcome anytime our church doors are open. Again, welcome, welcome, welcome. And for our viewers online, thank you for tuning in. Prayer and fasting for the month of October will be Monday and Tuesday from 6 a.m. to 12 noon. Again, that is Monday and Tuesday, 6 a.m. to 12 noon. So that means tomorrow and Tuesday from 6 a.m. to 12 noon, amen? amen? Corporate prayer is every Monday at 12 noon. We must learn how to come together at this time to pray. Remember, it is power in numbers. Join us on our prayer line every Wednesday from 7 p.m. to 7.30 p.m. The number for the prayer line is 1727-731-8690, and the access code to get in is 134134. And if you missed it, it is always posted on our Facebook page at Mount Pisgah Clio. Men's prayer line will be the first Monday of every month starting at 7 p.m. Amen? Amen. As everyone knows, we are always trying to devise new ways for everyone to keep, in, keep up with us and spread the gospel of Jesus Christ. Well, now you can subscribe to our Linktree page. This page gives you direct access to our Facebook page, Ways to Give, Instagram prayer recordings, and church service recordings. Be sure to subscribe today. It also gives you access to our Shopify store, where you can purchase t-shirts, hats, bags, phone cases, and more. Amen? And again, if you have not subscribed, it's a QR code in the back of the pew sitting in front of you. Amen? October is the month we celebrate this church for 41 years of service. Amen. Please celebrate with us on October the 27th, starting at 9.30 a.m. And this month is also a Breast Cancer Awareness Month. Amen? Amen. On October the 19th, Grace is Sufficient Worship Center would like for us to render a selection or a liturgical dance on October the 19th, starting at 7.30. I'm one of their members, yes, but we will get back with them because um, their secretary just gave it to me Friday at work, so um, I haven't gotten, got a chance to give it to pastor, amen? Also, October the 25th, Northside Baptist has invited us back to celebrate their pastor's appreciation for Pastor Sanders. It will start at 7 p.m. Pastor Farrell will be their guest speaker. Amen? Amen. Also, there will be um, a 5K run and walk if you would like to participate on Friday, October the 18th. Um, entry fee individuals is at $12 and teams are $25. It will be held at the Effingham County High School, Rebel Track, 1589 Highway, 119 Springfield, Georgia, from 7 p.m. to 10 p.m. I will post this in the back so you guys can see it, and it has a QR code as well. It is important that we take care of ourselves. We must start making healthier choices with diet and exercise. Try to walk at least three times a week. Remember faith to fitness. Please join us on third Sunday for prayer and Bible study starting at 9 a.m. Thank you. And thank you so much, Sister Taikisha. Look at somebody say, happy birthday, Mount Pisgah. How many of you love birthday parties? Ooh, I love me a good birthday party. When they start on time and end on time. Great God. And the food is? Amen. Baby shower food. Great God. Amen. To God be the glory. I get on my wife about that. I say, every time I go to the baby shower, they have the same food. <laughs> Amen. As soon as I leave there, I'll be hungry. <laughs> the food just run through you. Amen. So we're celebrating our church anniversary our church birthday 41 years and last month amen we had sister betty Mydell. she came second sunday and third sunday i remember remember when betty Mydell came and gave us some history 
uh, some nuggets, amen, some things about our church, amen. So we've asked, amen, someone to come forward, amen, today, amen, and third Sunday, is that right? Or just today? I think it's today. I forgot what I told you. <laughs> but I know it's today, amen. So we ask, amen, I think Brother Ricky Frazier, amen, our very own, amen, brother, our chairman, Brother Ricky Frazier, is come is going to come forth to tell you some good things about this church 41 years. Come on, put your hands together. Some stuff he's going to tell you you remember, some stuff you will not remember. <laughs> Amen. 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 On behalf of Mount Pisgay, officers, members, visiting friends, Pastor Farrell, Lee Lady Farrell, I told y'all earlier about the church. Uh, and my wife told me, she said, you weren't supposed to tell that now. And I told her, I got a lot of stories about this church. <laughs> I don't know how long pastor want me up here to talk about the church. But anyhow, I'm going to start off with Eric. Eric was in the junior choir. And he had a song that he sung that touched my soul as a young boy. I don't know if he remember it, but it's, oh, let us sing, sing till the power of the Lord come down. And they were the junior choir. Wow. As years went by, they joined the major choir. <laughs> Next door over here was a house called the Parshionist. That's where the pastor stayed. And I was telling everybody, the reason I joined this church is because we only had church once a month. I lived in Savannah. I had to go to church every Sunday. So when I got old, I already made up in my mind, this was going to be my church. Lord and behold, never thought that I'd be coming to church every Sunday again, anyhow. Yes, but to God be the glory, back then I didn't understand. I just wanted to play football, basketball, baseball, whatever sports there were, table tennis, badminton, anything the fellas was out there playing, a half rubber, all the sports. But getting back to the church, we... This wasn't a building. It was another building. We didn't have any running water. The water we had was a pump right on the outside. Okay? The ladies had to use the bathroom in the woods called the outhouse. The men had to use the bathroom over on this side called the outhouse. Now, I don't know how the ladies' bathroom looked on the inside, but I knew how the men's own looked on the inside. Now, they had two holes, and I was fascinated because all the other holes in Clio, Georgia, that I went to didn't have but one hole. Everybody that grew up maybe 50 years and over remember these things. Nobody younger could imagine what we went through. But to God be the glory, we still had a great time. And we had this pastor named Reverend Dingles. And I used to be sitting back there, kind of sleeping. You know, my parents always kind of had their eye on me. But I'd be kind of back there sleeping, and all of a sudden he'll break out. I know that God will take. I said, what the God in heaven is that? <laughs> so, so, so he used to wake me up. <laughs> and that was, that was, that was great because I didn't want my mom and daddy to wake me up, i tell you that. <laughs> and another story I had was, um, see, these benches, they had no cushion. It was hard benches. They were either burgundy, red, or one of those kind of colors, or maroon, okay? 
and they were hard benches. This side was full up all the time. And you know what they was full up with? Women. That was the women's side. This side him was almost naked. This is the side I had to sit on. Plus, my mother said, ain't, nobody, ain't no room over there. Let's all come over this side. We got plenty of room over there. A heater. I'm just letting you see how far God brought us. It was one heater over there and one heater over here. And it was cold in this church, church. But the sisters and the brothers, they would clap, clap, and stomp, and stomp. And some heat was coming from somewhere. Yes, That's right. It couldn't be nobody but Jesus. Because right. I'm going to tell you, when you walk the streets in Clio and, the, and, and, and they were dirt roads, the road felt like ice. When I be with my cousins, we all in the ditches and stuff like that. And for some reason, we, we didn't have good sense. We would have off our shoes. We felt like we had to do everything with our shoes off. Lo and behold, now this happened just one time that I remember. And I always tell Pastor this. And my wife, she don't even remember it. Eric, you might remember. But I had this cousin, well, this man that married my cousin, Gene, called Mr. Mac Wallace. How many of you remember Mr. Mac Wallace? Mr. Mac Wallace had a mule. Y'all remember that? Mr. Mac Wallace would ride that mule to church. You remember that? And he'll string that mule up right there. Right there. Now, my wife don't remember that, but I told her she, can't, she wasn't never late for church. And she, and she didn't never leave late. <laughs> so, so Mr. Mack was in it and Mr. Mack was out yeah, yeah. that was another good time in church yes, alright in 1983 we became out of the conference and became independent we had to go through a court battle to regain our church back. When we got our church back, all of a sudden, six years later, the church burned completely down. Completely down. My baby boy was one year, not quite one. I remember my wife grabbing him Running outside. Ricky was big enough to run himself. And my father-in-law camera was over there. And I picked up that camera because I knew the history of that camera would let us know where we come from. And a lot of us, like Shaquille, were real little. And um, Tanya was little. I could go on and name some more and more names. But um, <laughs> I start thinking about Sister Goldwa, how she used to sit over here so faithfully. And that was for years and years. But to show y'all how old I was, Sister uh, Am, <laughs> Sister Goldwa's mother, Sister Christine Johnson was over there as well. And I remember when she passed, and um, Savannah State was playing a football game, and my son just joined the band. I had to make a choice. I said, I got to come to Miss Christine. We turned the car around, and we came to Sister Christine. Brother Housie, yes. senior, he told me way back when I was a kid, 
He said, you're already doing the work. Would you be my second in command, my second steward? So I told him, I said, let me pray on this hymn. This was back in 1989. I said, let me pray on this. Um, Brother Housley. And then your dad, Brother Rayon Housley Jr., said, oh, he'll take it. No problem. He'll take it. I know. I, 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 I see what he got in him. He'll take it. Then we had Uncle Cleveland. See, all these people were like really kidding. Uncle Cleveland, Uncle Curtis, my father-in-law. They called him Uncle Bubba Leslie. I didn't know what to call him, so I just started calling him Dad to stay out of trouble. <laughs> you know. My mom, Sister Pearlene Garvin, I call her mom. And one day my dad and my father-in-law was out there talking, and my father-in-law told him, said, uh, you heard him call me dad? And uh, my father said, yeah, I heard him call you dad. What that mean? That mean I'm the big dad, <laughs> and you the little dad. <laughs> so, they, I mean, we had fun up here in Clio. We had a whole lot of fun, you know. I was looking over some of the faces, like Brother Sherman. His mama, Miss B. You can hardly get her to miss a Sunday. Ain't that right, Sherman? (laughs) Sherman always done some carpenter work for the church when we need him. And back then, everybody did something. And it was for free. It wasn't all that charging. And they were number one carpenters. You know? I remember my cousin Leroy Johnson. I don't know how much time y'all want to give me. (laughs) But anyhow, I remember my cousin Leroy Johnson. He was the first person that I know of to have a bathroom in Clio, Georgia. And the reason for that, he was working to this plumbing company called McKenzie out of Savannah. And he learned how to do all that plumbing work. Right? After he learned how to do that plumbing work, he shared it. He shared it with my Uncle Curtis, Warner, Reverend Warner. He shared it with my um, my cousin um, Eddie U. Johnson, which was his brother. And them guys, they didn't mind coming to this house, that house, all around, putting in bathrooms. Now, I didn't have that problem because I lived in Savannah. (laughs) But when I came here, (laughs) it was a whole different story. (laughs) You had to watch for snakes in the hole before you sit down. You know, I mean, it, it, it was amazing, you know. You go in the barn, they tell you, don't go in that barn because you don't know what could be in that, walk, in that barn. You know how God been so good to me? They had baby bobcats and stuff. Luckily, the mother wasn't around, you know. Then it used to be a pond cross from my Aunt Bernice's house. On, right there on the back road. I don't know if, I know Eric remember, but I don't know if Antonio remember because it's all dried up now. But we used to go in there and swim in that hole. You know. I know <laughs> that's off distance from the church, but like I, I, I told my wife, I got so many, so many um, fantastic things that I grew up here learning. And um, I was looking at the lights, you know, when I came here, they had waltzes flying in the air, three little waltzes. Every year, you would see them waltzes. And I don't know if they was the same waltzes. They couldn't have been, but they had good connection because they did the same thing 
year after year, year after year, three waltzes flying around. You know, and my wife told me, say, you tell the stories because you can tell them better than me. I don't know if I could tell them better than her, but I can tell you what, I know where God has brought us from. And I thank you, and I believe you with that, because I could go on and on about Mount Pisgah, on and on. I'm 67 years old. And I know I had to been coming here ever since I was six years old. Whoa. You know. Without a doubt. And this, this church here, this church here is my heart. And I thank you. Come on. We received that. Put your hands together for his story. Because his story is history. Can I get a witness? Amen. This is what we needed to hear. I want to say so much, but I can't because time is far spent. Amen. How many enjoyed that? Amen. As long as I'm the pastor, we're, I'm going to make sure, we are going to make sure that the younger people remember the history of this church. That's one good thing about camera system. You can record it and you can go back next year. If you forget what he say, just go on YouTube, go on Facebook, and be able to hear the history of where you worship. Amen. I love that. Thank you so much. We appreciate it. Amen. Takish, you did the announcements? Okay. Amen. I want to um, follow up with our fourth Sunday seed. Amen. We ask all the members and the officers to plant that seed this fourth Sunday. Amen. If you need to know who, what, what they are, amen, see your steward or you can see myself. Every member, amen, we're going to sow that seed this coming fourth Sunday for our 41st church anniversary. Also, we want to remember, amen, that we did have an incident happen to the church during the storm. Amen. I'm not sure if Tiffany have the pictures, but we have pictures of the tree that came through the fellowship hall, a big old tree. Okay, it wasn't a tree. It was a big limb of a tree, <laughs> but it looked like a tree. Amen. So the brothers came up here. Amen. That night it happened, and we also came. All right, there it is. Y'all see that tree? Look at there. Amen. That's Joshua on the hood. I mean, on the, on the top. Amen. Amen. So we got it pinned up. Amen. Yeah, I'm doing something. Look at Tony and Wesley back there talking. Pull to be working. They talking. <laughs> Look at that, y'all. We had to pull that tree out and look at all that debris. There's the brothers helping out. Amen. There's that tree laying down. There's Ricky blowing. That's the tree. Amen. The limb of the tree that was in the top of the roof. Amen. But thanks be to God, no one got hurt. Can we put our hands together and give God a praise? Of course, we didn't want that to happen, but God knows best. He allowed it to happen for a reason. Look at, look at somebody say, thank God for assurance. Amen. Thank God for assurance and it's a difference. Don't you dare have assurance in Christ without having insurance on earth. You need both of them. Can I get a witness? Amen. Amen. So we thank God. Amen. We're going to get that fixed. Amen. We also had an event called the Faith Walk. Somebody say Faith Walk. Amen. Amen. We want to be the type of ministry that minister outside of the four walls. Amen. So we had about, what, maybe 45? Amen. I can't remember. 38, 45 people come out to our faith walk. We was at Baker's Park. Baker's Park. Amen. Do we have any pictures of those? Amen. But we had a great time. Raise your hand if you came to Baker's Park and then our faith walk. Amen. They were there. Wonderful. We had a great time. And we're going to do it again two times next year. Amen. And we asked someone to oversee that. So, you know, Pastor don't have to try to get it all together, which I didn't do it by myself. Everybody helped out. But I wanted to make sure someone, amen, is responsible. I want to delegate someone to do that. And someone texted me about, two, about a week ago and said, Pastor, anybody ask to take care of it next year? I said, no. So she says she'll do it. So we thank God that we have someone to oversee that, amen, for our faith walk on next year. Amen. I think that's being all. We know about the announcement for um, Northside Church of God. Amen. When she read the announcement, Pastor Ferris preaching, that means they invite the whole church. 
I may be preaching, but I want to see some members. I want to see some officers. I want to see some deacons, some musicians. Amen. They're invited. Though. I'm not the church. We are the church. Can I get a witness? Amen. So even the visitor that's here, we're going to ask you to come out, amen, on October the 25th to Northside Church of God to fellowship, amen, with their pastor on his anniversary. Amen. I want to thank God, amen, for my godson. I call him my godson. Amen. But that's Nikki's brother. Nikki, our musician, her brother is here. Brother Tony Thomas. Come up here, Tony. Yeah, I'm going to do it. You know me. That's Tony Thomas, y'all. Great God. I remember when he was a little boy way down here. <laughs> Amen. How you doing, sir? Good to see you. Amen. We had a group at the church called uh, I Declare War. I Declare War. And he was one of the mime dancers. Show me some of the moves y'all. <laughs> some of the moves y'all did. Josh, you was in it too. Amen. But we had a mime group of about six young men. They were little little boys and we went all over savannah all in statesboro all amen all over the savannah to different churches amen peril mime they had all black on with gloves one time we painted the faces but that got too messy they said amen so pastor went to hop um party city and bought some masks amen but he was one of the members amen of that group and i text him amen maybe a week ago and, and told him i wanted him to be my guest today at the church and he didn't brush me off he's here amen thank you thank you so much amen give me a mic tell me i want to hear something about you amen there you go amen tell us your name young man uh so i do go by tony but my name is anthony thomas i'm a junior uh you good friends with my pops yeah, we family you know so uh amen. Uh, you know, I come here a lot. I've been here multiple times since I was little. So, you know, I kind of, I grew up in the church. I'm not really a visitor. Oh, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm happy to be here, you know. I haven't been here in a while, but, you know, I'm happy to be here. Hey, man, how old are you? I'm 22. Okay, all right, all right. Yeah. Oh, I hear him saying, you single? Uh, <laughs> nah, 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 I ain't single right now. I, I'm not hurt then, huh? No, nah, I'm not single right no, now. No, all right, he take it, ladies. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man, uh, tell us about your college experience. So I went to Savannah State uh, for three years. I played ball there, and then I'm transferring to a school in South Carolina called Limestone. Uh, went there, played ball there for a year. Uh, went to playoffs for the first time in my career. I was happy about that. Yeah. Uh, ended up stopping playing football. Right now I'm in the process trying to get my real estate license. So, you know, we're going to see where that takes me. Amen. Give it up, y'all. To God be the glory. This is why that our church is here, so we want to make sure we spotlight our young adults. I remember when we used to do this, and look, Cam was way down here. And he used to talk like this. Now Cam talk like this. What Cam at? Hey, man, Day Day was a little boy, and uh, Danasia was a little girl up here singing and dancing. And uh, who else? Tanya was up there singing, you are my strength. And uh, what's your, Trin, that's right, Trin. Hey, Amen. And little mama, what's her name? Anaya! Hey, Anaya! <laughs> Amen. So we want to continue to do that at Mount Pisgah. Show, put the spotlight on our young people because we want them to not just come to church, but we want them to have a relationship with Jesus Christ. A God that they heard about, never saw, but they can feel his presence in their life. Amen. So I want to encourage him, amen, to whatever you do, put God first. The Bible says in Matthew 6 and 33, but seek ye first the and his and all these shall be added unto you amen so we love you brother amen i've been um trying to petition him to be our organist amen the church allow us to purchase an organ amen and we don't have nobody to play it but i got tape of him playing the keyboard and the boy played the keyboard a little amen he was about 12 how old were you yeah, he was about 9 to 10 years old, but he was playing, I'm chasing after you. You remember that, Nicole? Hey, Amen. So I'm still working on y'all. This may be our next organ player. Put your hands together for Tony. Love you, man. <laughs> amen. All right. We're getting ready to, amen, take forth. If that being all, amen, getting ready to have our offering. Amen. This is a part of the service where everybody, amen, shall count on the honor and the privilege to participate in this part of the service. Amen. Because God loves a cheerful giver.
And we want to give our best gift today. I know we don't have church on first Sundays. So usually I look for second Sunday to be a very financial Sunday. Amen. Because you held your offering for first Sunday. Amen. So get your best gift in your hand. We have four ways that we can give here. Cash app, give the five. Amen. In person or you can mail it in. We're going to ask everyone to be so kind to stand. Amen. We always ask our adults to give our children their monies. Amen. We want the children to walk around the table and be active in giving. If you don't mind, do a right face or a left face and face the wall. If you'll be guided by usher, come giving as unto the Lord. We love you. Lord, you're worthy. I will give you the praise. Lord, you're worthy. Lord, you're worthy. And we give you. And we give you the praise. Always making a way. Always making a way. And we give you. And we give you the praise. Lord, you're worthy. Lord, you're worthy. And we give you. And we give you the praise, Lord, you're awesome, Lord, you're awesome, and we give you, and we give you the praise, Lord, you're awesome, Lord, you're awesome, and we give you, and we give you the praise, always making the way, always making the way, and we give you, and we give you the praise, Lord, you're awesome, Lord, you're awesome, and we give you, and we give you. Lord, you're faithful. Lord, you're faithful. And we give you. And we give you the praise. Lord, you're faithful. Lord, you're faithful. And we give you. And we give you the praise. Always making the way. Always making the way. And we give you. And we give you the praise. Lord, you're faithful. Lord, you're faithful. And we give you. And we give you the praise. Lord, you're sovereign. Lord, you're sovereign. And we give you. And we give you the praise. Lord, you're sovereign. Lord, you're sovereign. And we give you. And we give you the praise. You're always making the way. Always making the way. And we give you. And we give you the praise. Lord, you're sovereign. Lord, you're sovereign. And we give you. And we give you the praise. Lord, you're faithful. Lord, you're faithful. And we give you. And we give you the praise. Lord, you're faithful. Lord, you're faithful. And we give you, and we give you the praise. We're always making the way, always making the way. And we give you, and we give you the praise. Lord, you're faithful. Lord, you're And we give you, and we give you the praise. Bless you, bless you. Um, do we have any sin by money? And we give you the praise. We have sin by. Homes, and we have sent by by San Miss Sandra, Sister Sandra. There we stand for the blessing, please. Lord Jesus, we bless you on this day. We certainly bless you for the givings that have that we have received. We bless the people that have given us this offering. Bless their finances, their homes, their health, and strength in their relationship, Lord Jesus. Take care of their homes, Lord. Take care of the finances and bless their holy name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now we welcome the praise team. Come on, can we just worship God real quick? Come on. Every eyes closed, every hand lifted. I just want you to examine yourself real quick. I know we, we, we had a good time today. This is the opportunity for God. Come on, just there, you just examine yourself real quick. Every eyes closed, every head lifted. Don't even look at nobody. Just worship him with your heart. Yeah. Oh. 
Everybody say it's already slow. Yeah, no, 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 I dare you say he did it for me. me. I don't deserve your glory. He did it for me. God did it. God did it. Yeah. If that's your testimony today, can you stand on your feet and say it's getting better? Come on, if that's your spiritual posture on today, I'm here today because I believe the word of God that says that no matter what comes, no matter what goes, it's getting better, better just for me. And if it's getting better for me, brother Andre, it's getting better for my family. It's getting ready for me. We're getting ready to pray today. I know that we pray every time we come to church. We pray for the offering. We're going to pray before we leave today. But I love to pray. The Bible says prayer is a soul sincere desire of the heart. And we want to make sure that we always invite the Holy Spirit in these types of settings. Because we can do nothing 
if the Shekinah glory is not here. We'll be as dead men. That's why we need the Holy Spirit. Right where you're standing, trust and believe God. Let's pray. We love to pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come, God, in the matchless name of the only begotten Son, the one that says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father except he come by me. God, we thank you for this day, this day we never saw before. We'll never see it again. Father, we need you today like never before. Give us a word, God, to help us, to encourage us, to give us to be a beacon light to our family, a beacon light to the world, a beacon light to this community. Father, help us to change our ways in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. You that agree with that prayer, go ahead and snap your hands together and take your seats. Look at your neighbor and say, grab your Bible. Come on, tell your neighbor, grab your Bible. What'd they say? They should have said, grab yours, I got mine. Amen. Grab your Bibles on today. Amen. We want to thank God, amen, for us being able to come together in this like fashion, having to swap the services because of our fourth Sunday service. We're going to have a program on that Sunday. Amen. So we're looking forward to celebrating our church anniversary, 41 years of ministry. So we declared and decided to have our commune Sunday this Sunday. Amen. The Bible says as often as you do it. Hey, thank you. He said, do it in remembrance of me. So we want to make sure that when we do it, we remember why we do it. Not just as a form or fashion, but do it because we want to remember what Christ did for us. And Brother Brown, what he continues to do. Look at somebody say, he's still doing it. I, yes, he's still doing it for you. I know he suffered, bled, and died a long time ago. But God's not dead. At least that's what my Bible tells me. Amen. So the Lewis, God is yet alive. Amen. So we want to give you a word today of encouragement. Time is already forespent. Amen. So we will give you this word. We may not finish it, but you'll have just enough to sustain you. Old Testament, book of Nehemiah. Amen. Book of Nehemiah. Amen. It's right after Ezra. Amen. And right before Esther. Amen. You could give me a little bit of that if you have it. Amen. Look with me. Amen. To the book of Jeremiah. Amen. We want to give you a word on today that's going to quicken your inner man. That's going to help you to figure things out in life that you've been wondering about. And many of you that's on the sound of my feeble voice, you understand that life be life in. Things happen to you unexpectedly. People come in your life and God allow people to leave your life. New growth comes in your life, and sometimes God will allow things to end in your life. So because we understand that God is in control, Sister Renee Williams, of everything, we want to make sure that we give God praise in all things. Somebody say in all things. Uh, yes, you have a responsibility, Brother Alex, to give God praise in everything that happens in your life. Now, what does giving praise look like? It means recognizing where you are, but yet magnifying him and praising him no matter what storm you're in. <laughs> amen. I look at, amen, the weather channel, and I see that every time we have, amen, a, a hurricane, they always want to give it a name. Amen. They always want to give it a name. So I want to let you know as we journey in the book of Nehemiah that no matter what storm that you're in, what storm that you're coming out of or headed to doesn't matter the name. Sister Amber, my Bible tells me there's a name. Somebody say Jesus. Oh, yeah, that's it. There's a name that's given unto man where every knee shall bow, every tongue shall confess. The name of Jesus is above all names. Amen. So we want to make sure we understand, amen, there's nothing over God. Nothing over God. Everything is under him. Amen. Matter of fact, it's not just under him. It's under his feet. God has all sufficient power. Amen. Because he is our God. Let me give you just a little history, a little synoptic. Amen. Of um, Nehemiah. Amen. Many of you may have heard him before or his story. Many of you have ne never heard of him, but he was a cup bearer. He was. Amen. He made it to be a cup bearer of the king. 
He was one that was picked out to follow the king. His job and his responsibility is was to always make sure everything that the king, amen, to partake in his body, whether it be food or drink, it had to come through him first. Amen. Nobody came up and gave the king some water unless it came through the cup barrier. Usually the cup barrier was one that lived his life as a devoted Jew. Kind of like you. <laughs> you live your life as a devoted Christian. You're devoted, amen, to Christ first, and then you're devoted to your family, and then you are devoted to your, somebody scream, community. Amen. That's the order. Amen. So Nehemiah was one, amen, did a little history on him. Nehemiah was a Jewish leader in the 5th century B.C. B.C., somebody say before Christ. That's what B.C. means. Amen. He led the rebuilding of the city walls after learning that the Jews returning from exile found the walls torn down or broken down this is what he did nehemiah he prayed and fast for four months then he asked the king to return to jerusalem and re to rebuild the walls despite facing opposition and he did have some he 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 somebody say haters Oh, yeah, just as long as you live this life, you're going to have people that look at you and smile in your face but still hate you. Oh, yeah, you might not think that those type of people still exist, but there are people that the enemy has a launch in your life to stop you from growing, to stop you from believing, to stop you from existing in the will of God. So, yes, Nehemiah did have haters. Amen. The Bible says, despite facing opposition, Nehemiah led the people in rebuilding the wall, and the work was completed in just about 58 days. Somebody say 58 days. We have to understand that, amen, in this time, amen, tw 24 hours wasn't a day. 24 hours was, somebody say two days. In those times, one day was just 12 hours amen amen so he was able and his crew was able to rebuild the walls in 52 days we have to understand what the walls of jerusalem represented amen it represented somebody scream safety we have to understand that back in these times if you didn't have walls or a type of barrier day day in your life then at night the enemy can come in and take your stuff Oh, yeah, kind of how something, amen, this new president, and hopefully, amen, we have the right president that get into office. How many have ever seen a movie called The Purge? Oh, yeah, it's a very disturbing movie. Amen. That movie says that I'm going to give the world, the enemy, one day to do whatever you want in a lawless society amen so that's kind of how the damage of the jerusalem walls represented when the walls came a tumbling down why because the enemies of god the enemies of god came and sowed discord at night and burned down the walls and when they burned down the walls that gave everybody somebody say everybody you have to understand that gave everybody access to come in and take your stuff. So Nehemiah was one, amen, that had to journey off to follow the king, but he got word. A matter of fact, amen, I'm not going to read all of the scriptures, but Nehemiah got word that his town, his kingdom, where he was born at, had burned down. And we have to understand Nehemiah was kind of like me and you. He loved his family. He loved where you come from. How many of you know where you come from? Amen. How many know how, who, what set you claim? Amen. Amen. Somebody just say Clio, the country. Come on. You know where you're from. Amen. I bet not catch none of y'all saying y'all from New York City. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Everybody, everybody in here is from here except Tony Murphy. You're not from here? Amen. You're not from here? Amen. I, all right. Well, okay. Well, y'all, okay. Y'all like me. We're not from Clio. <laughs> I guarantee you, we still outnumbered in here. Amen. We're still outnumbered. So Nehemiah was one that wanted to go back and represent his country well. Let's read in Nehemiah 1 and 3. 
And they said unto me, the remnant that are left of the captivity there in the province are in great affliction and reproach. The wall of Jerusalem is broken down and the gates thereof are burned with, somebody say fire. Oh, when, thank you. When fire comes, it comes with an agenda and it comes with a purpose. Fire can save your life, but it also can destroy. Just, I thank you. Amen. Try eating some meat from somebody that ain't cooking all the way. Amen. All right. You know what's going to happen. Amen. They call that Simon Island. Great God. That's what I said. <laughs> Stop laughing at me. <laughs> it's poison to me. Don't eat it. Amen. Do not eat the, the chicken that they cook in the microwave. The raw chicken. Great God. Amen. I seen one of y'all do that one day on TV. Amen. Look at verse 4. And it came to pass when I heard these words that this is Nehemiah. He sat down and he wept. He began to get emotional, Joshua Pharaoh. And not just did he wept. The Bible says he mourned certain days and fasted and prayed before the God of heavens. Look at verse 5. And said, I beseech thee, O Lord, God of heavens, the great and terrible God that keepeth covenant and mercy for them that love him and observe his commandments. You see how he gave God his accolades before he asked anything from God? You see how he exhorted God, amen, sister Cynthia Orr, and magnify God before he asked God for anything? Oh, it ain't over. Listen to this man's prayer. He said, let your ear now be attentive and thy eyes open that thou mayest. God may you. I want us to understand, Minister Herbert and Sister Jasmine, amen, that we can't go to God in prayer demanding nothing. Can I get a witness? Nicole, so many times when we go to God in prayer, we don't even thank him for the water. We don't thank him for the bread. We don't thank him for the, the ushers. We don't thank him for the, amen, people that brought you the food. We just say, God. Bless the food in Jesus' name. Amen. <laughs> amen. Amen. Nehemiah is showing us, amen, sweet lady Pharaoh, that before you ask God for anything, make sure you give him the glory that's due to a king. Verse 6 said the B clause, I pray before thee now, day and night, for the children of Israel, thy servants. And this is what he did before he asked God for anything. This is a lesson to the church. Look at somebody say, I'm listening. This is what he said, and confess the sins of the children of Israel. Somebody say confession. It's so imperative and important. Before we ask God for anything, we learn how to repent and confess. Confess the sins of the children of Israel, which we have sinned against thee. Both I and my father's house have sinned. This is so significant. This is so valuable in the life of a believer that we understand Nehemiah's approach to the throne of God. Sister Betty, his approach to the throne of God was an act of humbleness. His approach to the throne of God was an act of generosity. He didn't come to God demanding anything, but he said, Lord, it's me standing in the need of prayer i have sinned both i and my father's house verse 7 says this we have dealt very corruptly against thee and have not kept the commandments nor the statutes nor the judgments which thou had commanded thou servant moses we have to understand that nehemiah was in the right place and brother lewis that's a place of humility he knew before he prayed that he needed God to come to his rescue. But before he got to asking God, he was able to give God a prayer of humility. We need to understand, you need to write that down. Lord, help me stay in a prayer of humility. Humility is the key. It'll unlock doors in your life that man can open. Can I get a witness? Amen. Hallelujah to God. Look at verse chapter 2. We're not going to read it all. We're getting to our key points. Verse 2, chapter 2, verse 2. Wherefore the king said unto me, what's wrong with my cup barrier? Why is your countenance sad, seeing that thou art sick? This is nothing else but sorrow of heart. Then I was very and sore afraid. 
And the king said, unto, and he said to the king, let the king live forever. Why should not my countenance be sad when the city, the place of my father's, amen, supporters, lieth in waste? And not just the place where my father's support your lie and waste. The gates thereof are consumed with fire. Verse 4 exclaims, Then the king said unto me, For what thou, for what doeth thou make request? In so many words, he's saying, What you want me to do? So I pray to the God of heavens. And I say unto the king, If it please the king. Now this is, he's getting ready to act the king for a request Anita I believe that because verse 1 when he prayed brother Eric in the act of humbleness instead of asking God Lord help me Lord give me Lord I need he was able to exhort God he was able to humble himself before the mighty God of Israel and because of his humbleness sister amen Sonia the Bible says in verse 2, the king saw his sad countenance. And guess what the king said? What do you want me to do? I want to stick a pin in that just for a little while, Sister Tara, and let you know that if you ever want God to come in a hurry to your rescue, pray in humbleness. Look at somebody say, let your prayer be humble. Mm -hmm. so the king said what do you want me to do for you, do for you verse 4 said did the king say unto him for what thou makest look at verse 5 and I said unto the king if it please the king and if thy servants have found favor in thy sight that thou wouldest send me unto Judah unto the city of my fathers support you because I want to rebuild my city let the church say amen let the church say amen again if I was to leave for you just for a little while, I won't need about eight minutes. Amen. Times 12. I don't know what that is. Amen. Amen. Look at the neighbor and say, damaged. Say, damaged. Not destroyed. Say it again. Damaged. Say, but not destroyed. Say it one more time. Damaged but not destroyed. Thank you so much. Amen. Understanding, amen, the peril that Nehemiah was faced with, amen, in these times, he had to get in a hurry to make sure that the walls were rebuilt. Why? Because they could not take another night of the enemy coming to the camp. Amen. Listen to this. God's leader helps the real purpose before the people nehemiah was one of god's leaders and he had a purpose before the people this is what his purpose was listen to this this is going to help you in your personal life the vision was to rebuild the wall but the wall was not the most important thing in his vision the wall which he wanted to rebuild had a larger purpose this is what the purpose was amen other than just building the wall Nehemiah and his people were really about reclaiming their identity as faith believers. Somebody say faith believers. Oh, yeah, he wanted to rebuild the wall, Lee, Lee, the Pharaoh, but ultimately he wanted to reclaim his relationship with God so he can build his faith in God. In my study, amen, of the verses of Nehemiah, amen, one, two, three, and four, I learned that the enemy came in the camp because of the children of God disobedience. What happens when God's people doesn't heed to his voice? Young children, what happens when you don't do what your mama and daddy tell you to do? All right, you get a whooping, you don't get no ice cream, they put you in the corner. Amen. I've seen one lady put the uh, lit girl in a cage. Great God. Amen. Y'all didn't see that a long time ago. They put people in churn in cages. Amen. But the disobedience of the people came with consequences. And one of the first things that I want to leave to you today is that in order for you to understand what damaged is, damage means this, a loss or harm resulting from injury to a person. 
property or reputation. Want to park right there for a little while and come down your street, come in your house where you live at. How many in, your, in this building have a man went through a damaged? Look at somebody say damaged goods. All of us have experienced a loss or harm resulting, from, resulting to an injury to a person or someone else. All of us have went through a damage of property or even your reputation. How many of you have ever been the talk of the town? Amen. How many of you ever had your name in the mud? That can damage you. Even though what they said about you, Wesley, wasn't true. But it was damaged. Many of you, we just talked about it. You saw the pictures. Amen. We had our back social hall to be damaged because of the heavy winds. Amen. Because of the trees. Amen. Being old in age. And it came through the roof. But what this story tells me in the book of Nehemiah, it exclaims a bigger picture. Other than just rebuilding the walls. There's something that God was trying to rebuild in the heart. Somebody say the heart. Just like you, he's trying to build something in the heart of his people. Even though Nehemiah gathered his people and he was able to build the walls, he yet still had an issue. The Bible said the children's hearts were far away from God. What good, what use is you for have a nice house, nice car, nice career, nice children, nice bank account, but you still are alienated from God. Do you believe that you can have all of the, watch this, of the finest things in the world? Do you know that you can have, amen, all of the best type of characteristics in your life and you got all the best friends, everybody like you? Amen. You're the, you the life of the party. And you know that person can still go home and feel lonely. Oh, I know what I'm talking about. Because God does not want us to be so caught up or so surrounded around the affairs of the applause of people. God really wants us to understand that he wants us to have an intimate relationship with you. Things are temporal relationships sometimes don't last can i get a witness places that you go you take pictures but once you leave it it's gone but what stays with you forever is your existence your belief and your relevance in the god that you call your savior can i get a witness I'm trying to let you know that we have to learn how to not live our lives, amen, and put these natural things before God. The Bible says it in the New Testament, Minister Herbert, and it says it a lot better than me and you. Don't put your faith in man. Don't put your faith in things of this world where rust can come in and corrupt. Where thieves, how many know a thief? Raise your hand right now. Yeah, yeah man, I know. <laughs> no, Nicole, you don't know no thief. The Bible say, what thieves can come in and steal. How many know some thieves can be right close to you? Oh, they can take from you and convince you that they didn't take it. That's a manipulator. Can I get a witness? Some of y'all thinking of a family member right now. Okay. <laughs> Amen. But Nehemiah wanted to understand and get to the place in his life where he understood that the walls being rebuilt was more than just the physical walls going up. It had a whole lot to do, amen, with their faith and trust in God. Because once the things leave you, you're left with your relationship. And your relationship with God is more precious than anything in the world. All right, damage means a loss, amen, resulting in injury from a person or reputation, but destroy. Somebody say destroy. In order for something to be destroyed, that means it's put to the end of existence. To be destroyed means, look at somebody say, it's gone. Dead, dead, dead. That's it. But when something is destroyed, look at somebody say, there's hope. Oh, we getting to it, y'all. We getting to it. The first thing I want to make a picture with you today, paint a picture. 
Look at the um, photo. I'm a black Picasso, and I want to paint the picture for you. The first thing is Nehemiah responded to the call. Somebody say respond to the call. Uh-huh. This won't be a fast rain today. It'll be a slow rain, but quick rain. The Bible says in Nehemiah 2 and 12. Look at Nehemiah 2 and 12. He said, I arose in the night. This is when Nehemiah went to the king and he got letters. He got access, y'all, to take the letters and to go to the proper places and to receive the brick, the mortar, everything he need to rebuild the temple. He said in verse 12, and I arose in the night. I and some few men with me, neither told I any man what God had put in my heart to do at Jerusalem. Neither was there any beast with me, save the beast that I run on. I want you to stick a pen in the area where he said, what God had put in my heart. There's no way that you can be a successful Christian if it's first not a, somebody say a heart condition. Ah, you can bless God with your hand, but God wants your I come to let you know, if you don't give God anything else in this world, don't you dare not give him, somebody say, my heart. Oh, because God wants your heart. All right? Look at verse number one, Nehemiah 1 and 3. I'm sorry, Nehemiah 2 and 17. 2 and 17, that's it. The first point I want to leave with you is Nehemiah responds to a call. Put your name where Nehemiah is. Minister Herbert, responding to a call. God called Nehemiah to have a heart to go and rebuild the temple. Look at Nehemiah 2 and 17. We're getting there. Then say I unto them, ye see the distress that we are in. How Jerusalem lieth waste. Can you imagine? I talked about it earlier in New Orleans. I know that happened, what, 12 years ago? It happened a while ago. Probably about eight years ago, amen. But still, that place has not recovered 100% of what that storm did to that whole entire state. And can you imagine just Nehemiah going to his place and seeing things out in disorder, in disarray? So in 17, he exclaimed, then say I unto them, ye see the distress that we are in. How my hometown, Jerusalem, lieth waste, and the gates thereof are burned with fire. He said this, come, let us build up the wall of Jerusalem that we be no more a reproach. Verse 18 said, then I told them of the hand of my God, which was good upon me. God is good. When is God good? All the time. As also the king's words that he has spoken to me, the king gave him, somebody say access. We learned that before in verse 1, because of his humbleness, the king saw the worry on his heart. The king gave him letters in order to travel back to his hometown and to receive everything that he needed to rebuild his wall. As also the king's words that he has spoken to me, and they said, watch this, let us rise and build. So they strengthened their hands for this good work. I come to let you know, Nehemiah cared for the people. You may be damaged, but God said you're not destroyed. In order for you to walk in the power of your, amen, fulfilling of your life, you got to recognize that you've been hurt. Huh, Nikki, you got to recognize that some people said some things about you. You got to recognize that every now and then you got the short end of the stick, Lily the Pharaoh. Every now and then you got to recognize that what I'm going through, sometimes it seems too heavy for me to bear. But Nehemiah is a testimony to all of us to let you know, even though you may be damaged, God stopped me by here to let you know you are not destroyed. There's more in you that you realize. Can I get a witness? 
Nehemiah, Nehemiah responded to the call. Nehemiah in verse 2 and 17, he cared for the people. Also, if some of you like to write things down, some of you don't. If you're writing it down, Nehemiah knew and understood his mission. Nehemiah knew and understood his vision. What was his vision? What was his responsibility? To follow his heart. My question to you today was, when was the last time God put something or someone on your heart that you didn't understand? And you obey the voice of God. I'm talking about whatever it is that God unctioned you to do. To unction you to say. A place he unctioned you to go. And you say, Lord, I don't know about this. But because I love you. There's that word love again. Because I know you died for me. I'm going to give you what you deserve. And what you deserve is for me to understand my mission. He understood his vision was to rebuild the walls. Let the church say amen. amen. My brothers and sisters, we must also always understand that Nehemiah done the most important thing after he heard that his town had burnt down. The Bible says he went into P-R-A-Y-E-R. All right, some of y'all slow. P-R-A-Y-E-R. There you go. Amen. He went into prayer. I tried to wake two of y'all up. <laughs> he went into prayer. Prayer is still essential. Can I get a witness with that? Prayer is a fundamental act for the people of God. Think of some things in your life that you put before prayer. I'll wait. Long time ago, mom and daddy said, before you put anything in your mouth, you better, you better bless it. When so, hey, hallelujah to God. Amen. Prayer is fundamental, an act of the people of God. God leaders and God's people must be in the right place to hear God's voice. These are more than just words that Pastor Pharaoh is saying to you. This is a position and a posture that God is expecting for you to dwell in. If you're going to call yourself a children of the most high God, you got to make sure that you put yourself in the right place where you can hear God's voice. Can I get a witness? I'm talking about, amen, putting yourself in the right voice to hear God's word even when noise is all around you. Amen. I remember one time we preached a message and I had Joshua and Lil Ben and Day Day and Cam. And while I was talking, they came out with pots and pans. Y'all remember that? And they was running around the church like chicken with their heads cut off. And here I was trying to talk and give a message. And they ran around the church, yeah, yeah, hitting the pans. That was a design. Somebody say distraction. You got to understand that all through your life, God will allow some design distractions to come in your life. How many ever seen the monkey? They have his hand over it. And the hand over his, and hand over his. They say, monkey, hear no, hear no evil. And we got to understand that the enemy is strategic in trying to get you to be separated from the force of God. Ah, but listen to this. We got a remedy for that. God can speak to us at any time. But if you are not tuning your heart towards God to seek his guidance, it's going to be very difficult for you to walk in God's visions and to touch the heart of others. I said it's going to be impossible for you to walk in God's provision and touch the heart of others. Why do you say that, Pastor Farrell? Because your job and your responsibility is to love them that don't love you. You say, Pastor, that's hard to do. Well, that's why he gave you help. They call, him, they call it the para, paracleti, the power, the indwelling of the Holy Ghost. Look at somebody say the Holy Spirit. Uh-huh. In order for you to understand and to walk in God's vision and God's authority, amen, you have to have the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we read, amen, I'm not going to give you a Bible study lesson today, but in your spare time, if you can read, amen, the book of Ezra, it's not too many chapters, you'll see some of the same similarities in Nehemiah and what happened to the walls. Ezra was even a prophet that wanted to help rebuild the walls. Can I get an amen? 
Uh huh. The prophet Habakkuk, not Ezra, but Habakkuk, climbed into the tower, believing that God had a vision for him and his people. Habakkuk, which is a minor prophet, we have to understand in the Bible there are two types of prophets. There's a minor prophet and there's a major prophet. Habakkuk was a minor prophet. He, amen, was willing to wait for the vision, but he knew that he needed to put himself in a position to receive him. Habakkuk had a famous scripture that all of us know. He said, write the vision, make it plain, for it, had, it shall not tarry, but it shall come in the fullness of time. Can I get a witness? Uh-huh. Okay. Listen, Nehemiah made prayer essential. The next one is Nehemiah built a team. Somebody say like-minded people. In order for Nehemiah to understand that he's damaged but not destroyed, you got to watch how many people that you put in your circle. Oh, I'm talking to everybody now. You got to watch the people that you confide in your most innermost secret. Oh, y'all don't believe that. You got to watch who you call your H. Coon Boom or your homeboy or homegirl. Because I want to let you know that everybody that run with you ain't really. I know you say, Pastor, ain't like that. They love me. Well, be careful. Amen. Be careful. Be careful because everybody that's smiling in your faith, ain't you? I know I got that point. Uh -huh. Everybody that smile in your faith is not your friend. So Nehemiah had to build a team. Amen. You don't have to turn here, but it says in verse 18, Then I told them of the land of my God, which was good upon me. That's 2 and 18. And also the king words that he has spoken to me, and he said, let us rise and build. So they strengthened their hands, amen, for their good work. Look at somebody say, build a team. Mm, build a team. I want to stay right there for a little while because some people got some people that's on a team, but they ain't have their best interests. I know what I'm talking about. Amen. Let's move on. The next thing God told Nehemiah to do, Nehemiah had to remind the people of their purpose. Everybody under the sound of my voice, God said, you have a purpose. What, what is that purpose? That purpose is for you to fulfill God's vision for your life. In order for you, Jasmine Pharaoh, to fulfill God's vision for your life, you got to, somebody say, decrease understanding amen the ministry tiffany herbert of john the baptist in order for you to decrease in god you've got to put your agenda behind god's agenda let the church say amen you say well pastor how can i do that you have to understand that your will is not his will you got to understand that your ways is not his ways the Bible says, as far as the east is from the rest, the north is from the south. That's how far your ways is, somebody say, from God. Oh, yeah. So Nehemiah had to recognize, amen, that he had to build a team of like-minded people. Amen. Don't be afraid and don't be scared to tell somebody, I love you, but I can't run with you. Oh, I know what I'm talking about. Don't be afraid to tell some family members, okay, we had a good time, but now I got the exit stage. Come on now. Amen. i never forget, I went to a couple of ceremonies. Amen. And once I got through doing my ceremony, amen, they was waiting on me to leave. Amen. Wait the pastor leave before we do our thing. Amen. That was about four, four five, three years ago. Amen. But now, quick call. They don't wait the pastor leave. He said, Pastor, you want some? I said, the devil. Hey, Amen. I do holy communion. <laughs> Great God. Y'all ain't y'all gonna miss that. But we have to understand that people are getting more wickeder and wiser. People not standing behind the wall waiting on you to leave. Oh, they super bold. They coming out in the public. And they're showing you who they are and what they are. And I'm talking about sin. I'm not talking about a particular sin. I'm talking about, somebody say all of them. Guess what sin is, Eric? The Bible said in the book of Revelation, sin is transgression against the law of God. Okay, let me break it down for Negro. All right. Boy, what I told you to do. 
what is written in the word for how God told you how to walk, how to talk, how to treat your neighbor, how to respond. I come to let everybody know under the sound of my voice that your, the God that you serve should be in your action and your reaction. Oh, yeah, some people, somebody need to, okay, I'll talk to them. Somebody need to repent because I responded in an ungodly way because they provoked me. No, 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 no. They didn't provoke you. Look at somebody and say, it was in you all along. Oh, I know what I'm talking about because I used to be like that. It was in you all along to flip off. It was in you all along to feel, feel, foul, foul. It's in you. It just took somebody to just nudge you a little bit. That's why we still have prayer meetings at the church. That's why we still, amen, have Bible study. That's why we still have the Wednesday prayer call because there's some things that's on the inside of us, Joshua. That we got to eradicate. We got to get rid of. When you eradicate the thing that's not like God. I come to let you know the promise of God will replace it. How many know what the promise of God is? He said I will not leave you comfortless. But he said I'll give you. What kind of? I'll give you another comforter. And he shall dwell on the inside of you. Give me two more minutes. I'll be finished. Listen to this. Nehemiah reminded the people of their purpose. Write that down. This one says, Nehemiah, remain focused. Somebody say, stay focused. Oh, stay focused. Some people in church sleep right now. Say, stay focused. All right. Listen to that. As they rebuild the wall, they were ridiculed and mocked. They had time to go all into it, but they had a man named Sanballat. He was one that went to the king and went to the people and started picking at him. How many know we got people, God, oh my God of mercy, thank you, Lord. We got godly people that will say some of the strangest things to you. Huh? We got some godly people that will lay you out with their words and still come take communion. <laughs> huh? And still lead praise team. And still come clean the church. And still come do the sound. And still come play the organ. And still come do the drum. I'm talking about everybody. Still come preach. Oh, I come to tell you, Nita, we got to be careful that we touch not the unclean thing. And that we recognize that we got to stay focused. We can't be so easily moved. Because you always have some enemies always coming to talk about you. Amen. They rebuild the wall and they had to go through ridicule and they were mocked. The enemies did everything possible to discourage them. Kind of like they doing in your life. You ain't got to go to church every Sunday. Amen. You ain't got to pray. You, didn't you pray yesterday? Oh, you got to pray today. When the church got prayer on Mondays at of 12 noon, they said, wherever we're at, pastor asked everybody to pray. Well, well, come on and do this. We'll pray later. You better be careful praying later because you'll turn that later into later and another later until later. And next thing you know, you'll find yourself, you know what? I didn't even pray on the Monday on um, 12 o'clock noon prayer. We have to be careful that God will allow some distractions to come your way that are strategically planned to test your faith. They threaten, amen, to tell the stories about Nehemiah and how he was not persistent. Amen. Understanding that Nehemiah had to stay focused. He had to be this. Listen to this. Not easily moved. Look at somebody say, I ain't easily moved. I know the wolf may huff and puff. I'm talking about the story of the three little. All right. I know the wolf may huff and puff, but I ain't easily moved because my house is made out of a. Somebody say brick house. Oh, I ain't living in the house no more. Amen. Sister Taikisha with straw or uh, hay. I got a strong foundation. Oh, I learned how to have a life of prayer, of life of inti intimacy with God. I want to let everybody in here on the sound of my voice, amen, that God allowed Nehemiah to use the burnt stones. To use everything that he can use that was burned up in the fire. 
He used those things because those items was able to be tested in the fire. Can I get a witness? You need to understand that Neil started a revival. What kind of revival did Nehemiah start? He had a revival of burnt stones. He had a revival of people with scars. He had a revival of people with a bad past. He had a revival of people, amen, that promised things to other people but never fulfilled it. Nehemiah had a revival of the stones that were caught in the fire. What did Nehemiah do with the stones? Look at somebody say he used them again. I know you had a shaky past. I know that last night was rough. You just needed to do that so you can get through the night. I know that sometimes you find yourself calling her or calling him and you know that that ain't your wife or your husband. I understand, amen, that you find yourself self-medicating. But I come to let you know, God, that God can still use you. Even though you've been burning the fire, even though you fell short of his glory, God say, you may be destroyed. You may, what's my title? You may be damaged. Thank you. You may be damaged, but you're not destroyed. What can ultimately destroy you? Giving up. Giving up. Don't you give up. In order for you to be in God's will, whew, glory to God. I see some good things coming from you, Wesley. Stay faithful to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I see some great things coming in your life. The enemy, thank you, Lord. The enemy desire, amen, to have your mind, to keep you from not being focused. But God say, continue to stay in his will. Glory to God. Amen. You, we may be damaged, but we're not destroyed. People will still ridicule your name. But you can't live, you can't give up hope. Don't you dare, I'm talking to everyone, throw in the tower. Because God still want to use you. Even the broken pieces in your life, God say, I can mend them back together. You got to understand that this is a message of hope. This is a message to rescue you. I used to tell my Sunday school class all the time, Sister Betty, Imagine if you was in the river drowning. You knew how to swim, but how many of you ever caught a cramp? <laughs> I'm talking about in both legs, both ankles, both thighs. Ain't no way you swimming, Bubba. You can't even dog paddle with cramps. But imagine if you was in the river drowning and someone threw you a life raft. You know what we do sometimes? We throw it back. Why would a drowning man why would a drowning man throw a raft back? Because he don't recognize he's in trouble. Oh, if you're here today, I know you're damaged. I know you have I know you have some broken pieces. I know you have some things that you ain't quite figure out yet. But God say, you ain't destroyed. This ain't the end of you. It won't always be this way because God has sent a Nehemiah I say God has sent a Nehemiah oh I'm not it guess what the Nehemiah is guess what the Nehemiah is Nehemiah was a cup barrier he was one that came in place to keep the king safe Nehemiah was one that prayed. Nehemiah was one that went to rebuild the town for his people. Nehemiah watched who he had in his circle. I don't know about you, but Nehemiah sound like an image of Jesus Christ. And Jesus is still here today because we're still living the word and walking in the word. What is it in your life? That you're chaba yeshe, that we that you are trying to hold on to. But God says it's time for you to throw it in the fire. Don't get rid of it. 
There's some things that need to be thrown in the fire because it has a destination to bring you to your expected end outside of the will of the Father. Everyone standing, I want you to touch your neighbor. Just touch them on their shoulder. And I don't know who that person is standing next to you. We're a family church. We say we're family. We should act like family more. And you don't know what that person has gone through. Don't worry about the scriptures, Tiffany. God took me in another direction. You don't know what that person has went through or going through. But God said you're not destroyed. And right where you're holding that person's hand or touching their shoulder, can you just pray for them? Mm. Some of you are holding the hand of a young man, a, a young lady, a child. And we really don't know their past. Some of you may be holding the hand of a person that you do know, but you don't know the inward parts. Yabashata. You don't know what they may struggle with. You don't know what's getting ready to transpire in their life. I know they got some old stones that look useless. Some of those stones smelled bad. Yabashata. Some of those stones were left for dead. Some of those stones were burnt stones. But when the man of God came and laid his hands to the plow and was able to refurbish, he was able to, he was able to send revival. You're touching that hand now. You're touching that shoulder. And I'm asking you to pray for them to intercede on their behalf. That God will give them hope. That God will let them know that even though they're damaged, they don't have to be destroyed. You don't have to continue in this way. But you can be revived. Because help is not on the way. Help is already here. Hallelujah. Let that hand go, that shoulder. We want to do an altar call for them that are not saved. I don't know who's in here that needs to surrender their life to Christ. Stop looking. Yabba, stop looking at your past. Your past does not define you. But what your past should do is usher you to a place in God where the devil can't touch you. I come to let you know that only in him there's safety. I can just imagine that there are some people that have left this side to the other side that wish they had a chance to say, God, I surrender all. Everyone standing? Blessed Savior, I surrender all. We're getting ready to take communion, but I want to make sure we have this part of the service open for anybody that needs to repent and ask God for forgiveness the altar stays open and it's open even now but he wants you to surrender all to him even you that are watching Facebook and YouTube we love you with Jesus joy and we want to make sure that you don't let this moment pass you by we want to make sure that you have an opportunity to give, surrender your life to him. He was hung up for your hangups. So if you're here today and you want to surrender to God, say, I surrender to you, Jesus. I Say all oh, to thee, yeah. Oh, to thee, my blessed Savior. It only take for you to step out from where you are and to come to God. Okay, if you're already saved, if you know that you have some strongholds, if you're a Christian, you gave your life to Christ, you say, Pastor, I just get tempted and weak 
in these areas of that one area don't you be ashamed today Jesus said if you be ashamed of me I'd be ashamed of you before my father take this part of the service serious because there's help for the sin sick soul there's help for the Christians that's struggling in areas of their life where they need more of the blood to be applied. It's time to surrender all to him. He don't just want your Sunday service. He just don't want your Sunday hallelujahs, your tithes or your offering. God say, I want you. It has to be a heart transfusion. Whew. It has to be a mind change. So if you're here today, you're saved, you need prayer. You can come to the altar now. This ain't for everybody, but this is for somebody. <laughs> I wouldn't even did it if God didn't tell me to do it. Amen. You want everybody, if you don't, your right hand is mostly your dominant hand. Raise your right hand to God. Jesus is on the right hand of the Father making intercessions for you day and night. He loves you and he cares. He wants you to be strong. He wants you to be resilient. But the only way we can be resilient is that we recognize I've been damaged, but God has threw me a life raft. I don't have to walk in defeat. I'm not destroyed because God has come to rescue me father in the name of jesus as i stretch forth my hands over these your people we pray that your shakana glory will go with them go before them shield them god from danger give them give them the joy restore the joy that's on the inside father help them to understand god that you're hiding them behind the cross and no weapon formed against them shall prosper give them to know that they got to walk in true righteousness and true holiness. Not before men, but behind closed doors. Because that's the real them. Father, strengthen them that didn't come to the altar. Save them that didn't come and might have been ashamed. Father, give them another chance. You are a God of another chance. Give them hope, God, that they can find their way back home one day. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Clap your hands all over the auditorium. Give God the round of applause. It means a lot that you stayed and didn't go. It means a lot. Amen. Amen. I can't pay you for it, but God sees the intent of your heart. Amen. I know the ones that had to go. They, I, I pray they had to go. But if you don't have to go, please stay, amen, for the Holy Communion. Can you do that? Amen. Amen. We're going to ask our church officers to come forth. Amen. Amen. We're going to ask our church officers to come forth. Prepare your hearts and minds for Holy Communion. We're going to ask children, amen, to get with your parents. Amen. No children are to receive the Holy Communion unless you're with your parent. Your parent has authorization for you. Amen. I don't think the ushers give it to the kids anyway. <laughs> amen. Right? We don't give it to the kids, do we? Amen. Amen. Yeah, the kids walk up, so we don't give it to the kids anyway. Amen. Prepare your hearts and minds as we have Holy Communion. Give us a song. He reaches to the high, yes, Say this with me. Say, I'm saved. 
I know I'm saved. That's all that really matters. You're saved, and you got to know you're saved. Salvation ain't always a feeling. Oh, I feel sanctified. I feel holy. No, all the time you may not feel it. Feelings should not move you, amen, to define who you are. I know I've been redeemed. I, amen, I know I got a new heart. I know I got a new mind. I know that I'm striving to live a sanctified and holy life. Amen. I'm getting ready to do some changes and have some new members classes. I'm just getting some literature together that fits this ministry. And we have members coming, join the church. And amen. We're going to have to have some classes for new members. Amen. Amen. We have some people join the church. So we want to make sure that we're doing it the right way. Amen. Because this is a holy church. And we want to make sure that everyone that's wanting to participate in any auxiliary of the church, somebody say there's a standard. Oh, there should be a standard. There's standards in your house. There's standards in your car. There's standards in your body. So why should there be standards when it comes to the holy place where God dwells? Amen. Amen. It's past time. I, think. I believe I probably should have been done it. But we're doing it now. Can I get a witness? Amen. So we'll get those dates for you and that literature to you to have those, amen, new converts class so we can give them the core of the ministry. Our stewards can talk to them on the phone and tell them this and that, but there's some other things that needs to be told to them so they can really understand why God is calling them to a higher place in their life. Amen. Hallelujah to God. Amen. Let's get ready to pray. Amen. We're going to make sure that everyone is ready and prepared to take of God's holy sacrament. Amen. Because this is God's serious business. This ain't our business. This is God's business. Amen. If you don't mind, let's rest to our feet. Amen. It's not going to take long. Let's rest to our feet. And let's pray. The ushers are holding the door. God of heaven. God of our weary tears, God of our silent tears, we come before you this day. Thank you, you God. Hallowed will be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. God, sanctify God. Sanctify ourselves. Sanctify our hearts, God, that we may be made accountable. That we may be made, God, acceptable in your kingdom. Father, we pray that everyone that take forth of this juice, of this bread, will sanctify themselves in the truth. By living that life of repentance, that life of forgiveness, God, that you can be glorified, not just today, but every day of their lives. We repent of sins that we have done in this flesh, done toward one another, sins of omission, sins of commission. Father, we ask you to wash us in thy blood so that when we take of this holy sacrament, God, we will be worthy. Father, bless God. Encourage strengthen like only you can do it and we thank you this is thou servant's prayer in jesus name we pray and everyone that agrees say amen amen, amen and amen Bible says that Jesus had to take his disciples, his chosen vessels, to a particular place, a place that was scheduled for them and only them. And he said, this is called the Last Supper. And he said, I won't do this again with you until I go into my Father's kingdom. 
You know what that tells me, little Tony? That there's going to come a time when we go to heaven. Yabba, that we're going to sit and dine with Jesus. I don't know what type of food we're going to have, but whatever it is, we're going to sit and fellowship with him. Because he said, I won't do it again with you until we're in my father's kingdom. So he took his disciples. That's why we have these church officers up here, because they have, amen, very valuable responsibility to handle the things of God sacredly. Amen. So we asked them. Amen. We asked them to come forth. The Bible says he told his disciples, he took the bread, he lifted it up, he broke it, and he blessed it. And he said, this is my body, which will be shared for many. He told them to eat ye all of it. Let's all eat together. And likewise, Jesus, the Son of God, knew that his time was coming near. He knew, Brother Brown, that he was going to have to sacrifice for the sins of the world. So he said, this is my blood which is of the New Testament. That means you're no longer under the old covenant. You're under grace and mercy. In order for you to receive the forgiveness of sins, you have to go, somebody say, through the blood. Amen. That is the remission of your sins. He lifted the cup and blessed it and said, drink ye all of it. Let's all drink together. Amen. At this time, we want you to prepare yourselves, amen, to participate in our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, death, burial, and resurrection. You're standing already. Thank you so much. Start from the rear, and you can come forth to receive your receptacle. Come on, sing it, y'all. I know it was the blood. Say it now. I know it was the blood. Say it now. I know it was the blood. Just two are you? Okay. Mary and Maggie, we coming to you. Minister Herbert bringing it to you. Mary and Maggie. We coming to you, Mary and Maggie. to remove that top layer amen get our musicians they're they good amen she got it remove that top layer that would expose your bread we want to do the bread first amen take that wafer out we're going to ask you to take it out the bible says he told his disciples to eat ye all of it let's all eat together in the name of the father the son and the holy spirit Amen. Turn it on over. You'll have that, amen, that grape juice exposed. Let's take that first layer off, amen, and we want to all make sure we partake of his blood, the juice that represents his blood, all together. At this time, we're going to ask everyone to drink ye all of it. You may drink at this time. Amen. Our ushers are coming around to receive your receptacle. Amen. Thank you for putting it in the bucket and not behind the pews. Amen. I was in the church one day and I found two behind the pews. I said, oh, wow. Amen. But we're not doing that anymore. So we thank God, amen, that you're putting in the bowl from our ushers. We love you so much. Ain't nothing you can do about it. Amen. We're going to have our birthdays on next Sunday. Amen. But just raise your hand if you celebrate the birthday in October. Oh, whoa. Amen. It's a lot of y'all. But we'll do it officially 
next Sunday, we'll have your birthday song, and we might have something for you. Let me, let me see. We'll see. I'm just trying to get y'all to come back, really, to the either, really. <laughs> you know? No, we will have something for you. Yeah, we will. In Jesus' name. We will have something for you. Oh, everybody that got a birthday, we'll have something for you next Sunday. Amen. To God be the glory. We love you. Can we all dismiss together? Amen. All the children come up. All the children. Come on. Children come up. All the children. Wee. They children now, y'all, but next year, the year after next? No, no, no. One of them sleep on the front bench. Look at RJ. I just asked, I called Deidre and I asked Deidre, I said, where RJ? I ain't seen RJ in a long time. She said, well, he still wanna, he still pass by and talk about the blue church. Huh? Oh, that's good. How, are y'all, everybody in school? How, are y'all loving school? Yes? Good? Love, everybody loving school? Good. Amen. All right, this is our choir here, y'all. Amen. I heard Ricky say something about the young adult choir. Junior choir. How old was Eric in the junior choir? About 17? Huh? Oh, Eric, you swell? What? <laughs> amen. So, amen. It don't make sense to recreate the wheel. We might as well jump on the bandwagon of what our forefathers started. Can I get the witness? So this could be the junior choir. Is that right? Amen. Amen. The junior choir. Y'all turn around to the audience. All the children. Y'all see what we got, y'all? We ain't got no time to waste. We don't have no time to play. This is serious business. We have to make sure we are an example for our children. I want all the children, y'all gonna help me with the prayer, okay? Break it down some, Nikki. Bow your head, y'all pray after me. Say, Lord Jesus, thank you for this day. We receive your word. Help us to be obedient to your word. Give us, Lord, safe travels as we leave this place. Help us to recognize, to acknowledge in our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. We love you. God bless you. May heaven continue to smile from you. Snacks in the back. Snacks in the back for the children. Make sure you don't eat.